the life of the church never stands still. Her whole history is somehow dramatic. This isn't to say that peace cannot be found, but we have to stay on our toes. We cannot simply rest on lessons of the past, but must be willing to take eternal principles and apply them to new situations in an ever-changing world. Today, it's more important than ever that we learn the meaning of true obedience in the church. And so I highly recommend this book by Dr. Peter Kwasniewski. Every virtue can suffer from defect or excess. So a defect of courage we know is cowardice, but an excess would be temerity, where one does not pay proper attention to the danger, when one is heedless or reckless. Or a defect of generosity would be stinginess, but one can also fail in generosity by excess, by prodigality. And so with obedience, a lack of obedience is a self-willed rebellion. But an excess of obedience is when it is blind, when one obeys instructions which are not from legitimate authorities, or which are not aimed at the common good, or do not lie in the power of those giving the instruction. This book by Dr. Kwasniewski is not long. It takes a wonderful look as obedience as the supreme virtue modeled by Christ and examines how authorities must be submitted to God if they are to expect obedience from those under them. Today, when the goods of the church are under attack from within the church on an unprecedented scale, this book calls us to a rational obedience to God. It answers the question what to do when the Pope sets himself against the common good and makes clear that to defend the ancient faith is not to be a revolutionary. It answers the questions why opposing the traditional liturgy is equivalent to opposing the work of the Holy Spirit and comprehensively rejects the notion that Catholics should live in blind obedience and importantly shows there are situations where the usual structures of obedience become impediments to, rather than facilitators of, the Church's mission and the good of souls. I would like to give a few quotes from the book and hope that you will read it all. We should be very clear that an authority can actually act against the common good. And more importantly, ordinary Catholics are capable of recognizing when this is happening. If we could not, we would be helpless to respond to any moral or intellectual deviations on the part of our pastors and teachers. For this we rely on the sensus fidelium, a supercharged version of the reality that we cannot abdicate our personal reason or Christian common sense. So too, in the realm of grace, ecclesiastical rulers do not have an authority that simply shuts down the believer's reason and evacuates his responsibility before God to love the church's common good more than any personal good of anyone. Though it might be surprising to some after so many decades of deformation, to attack the traditional mass is to attack the providence of God the Father, to reject the work of Christ, the King and Lord of history, and to blaspheme the fruitfulness of the Holy Ghost in the Church's life of prayer. It is contrary to the practice of every age of the Church, of every saint, council and pope prior to the 20th century, and attacking the traditional Mass contradicts several key virtues of the Christian life, most notably religion, gratitude and humility, as well as faith and charity. This is something new in the life of the Church, a self-mutilation, God wants us to find new answers based on eternal principles. Otherwise, in what sense are we living? There are many within the church hierarchy who oppose tradition because of ideology. And this is why no arguments will prevail with them, no appeals to kindness, fairness, justice and mercy, no petitions even if signed by millions. And that is why they must be opposed with complete and utter refusal to comply with any of their destructive demands. A sincere love for the Church's pastors is not content to allow the custodians of tradition to endanger the salvation of their own souls and the souls of others by abusing their power to the detriment of the sacred treasures committed to their care. An absolutely key point well made in the book is that traditionalists who seek to be consistent with their principles must utilize the pre-1955 Holy Week for which no permission is necessary. There's much to say on this, but I'll pass over it here and again recommend the book to you. Commenting on the devastation of the Church's self-inflicted restrictions on the liturgy over the past two years, we read, The recently widespread prohibitions of Mass in the name of a public health crisis are not only unprecedented in Church history, they also belie a dangerously Protestant conception of the Mass. As defined by the Council of Trent, 
the primary end of Mass is not to serve as a social function or communal meal for the benefit of attendees, though it serves those ends as well, but rather to be a divine monument, a visible sacrifice such as the nature of man requires, where that bloody sacrifice wants to be accomplished on the cross might be represented, the memory thereof remain even unto the end of the world, and its salutary effects applied to the remission of those sins which we daily commit. The loss of the sense of wonder at the power of the liturgy is so closely bound with the willingness to close churches. We must overcome this. In other words, the Mass must continue as the Church's daily pleasing sacrifice to God, regardless of what the external conditions may be. Prudence's role is not to cancel Mass or sacramental access, or to severely limit them, but to determine how best to ensure their unbroken continuation under the circumstances. He who parted the Red Sea can always give us a way to him. So I highly recommend this short book to you, which is available on Amazon. There's a link below. Again, the greater part of obedience is submitting to those whom God has put over us, whether in the family or the state or the church. But he is over all, and when anyone in authority would go against him, it makes no sense to follow them rather than God. God bless you all.